GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Special Limited Series v i s a k Day Episode 2 The Birth of Our Buddha Hello everyone You are listening to GTM Podcast Buddhist Knowledge Special Limited Series v i s a k Day Commemorating the Birth, Enlightenment and the Death of the Lord Buddha In the first episode, the world's most important day, we provide an overview of the series and explain the significant step of the Lord Buddha's path to Buddhahood. In today's story, we bear witness to his birth. In the last episode, our King Santu Sita had accumulated all levels of the ten perfections, celestial beings, Brahma beings. And then, from Brahma beings, came together to request our Bodhisatta to have his final rebirth into the human realm. King Santu Sita considered the five conditions required for the final rebirth, which are: one, the continent; two, country or kingdom; three, lifespan of human being exceed. 100 years old. Four, family status considered to be one of the highest form of respect. Five, a suitable woman who would serve as the Buddha's mother. Having verified the five factors, he saw that he would be born in the Jambudipa continent, living in the Kapilavattu kingdom, where the people are ready to learn his wisdom. The lifespan of people around that time was 100 years old, and he would be born to a royal family with Queen s i r i m a h a m a y a as his mother. All the conditions were met, so he resolved to be reborn into our world. The forest moon during the night of the full moon is brighter than any star in the sky. In the same manner. The Lord Buddha's birth is more glorious than the birth of any being. On the fifteenth day of the eight waxing moon, Queen s i r i m a h a m a y a gave alms and observed the eight precepts, as was her normal practice. She slept at night, but at dawn. The next morning, she dreamed that the four kings of Jatu Maharajika realm, the first level of heaven, came together to carry her along with her bed to the celestial forest of Himawanta. The bed was placed on a great stone slab beneath the tree. Ladies from the celestial realm took her to bath in the holy lake of Anoda, which is also in the first level as well. They applied scent powders to her skin, and decorated her body with sacred flowers. Afterward, they took her to the bedroom of a heavenly mansion situated on top of the silver mountain. While she lay in bed, a great white elephant from the golden mountain appeared. He carried in his trunk wonderfully fragrant white lotus. He walked around her three times. As to pay respect, and afterwards, it appeared as though he entered the right side of her abdomen. At that very moment, there was a loud rumbling, the ground quaked, illumination and supernormal events occur in ten thousand universes. The queen became pregnant. In the instant. Our Bodhisatta was conceived. He was comfortable in the womb and did not feel limited in any way. The queen felt comfortable and light. She could clearly see our Bodhisatta sitting in a half lotus position inside her womb. When the queen was ten months pregnant, she decided to return to her homeland, which was the custom to deliver her child. On the morning of full moon, fifteen day of the sixth waxing moon, 
the queen in her golden coach, surrounded by her entourage, began her journey. The royal march continued until it reached the beautiful Liberty Grove. The queen wished to rest, and afterward took a walk around the royal park. The minister prepared a place for her to sit beneath the shady sala tree. While relaxing, she raised her hand to touch the tree branch when suddenly she felt the pain of birth. Officials hurried to prepare the area and placed curtain around her. Close to noon time, the queen gave birth to a male infant. Before his feet touched the ground, Brahma kings from Sudava realms used a divine cornet to receive him. Channels of cool water from the air bathed the queen and the great bodhisattva who possessed all 32 physical characteristics of the perfect man. He was then given to his human nursemaids. Our great bodhisattva stood up, looked around, and could not find anyone possessed as much merit as he did. He turned toward the north, took seven steps that were cushioned by lotus, and in the surrounding voice that was pleasing to the ears, said, I am the Supreme Being. I am the most advanced being in the world. I am the most sublime being in the world. This is my final rebirth. Visak Day is universally important day where we as a community gather together to remind ourselves of the greatest depth of gratitude we own to the Lord Buddha. We would like to invite everyone to dress in white and polite cloth, come together to practice generosity, observe the precepts, and enjoy our full moon of peace live meditation on Zoom conference on this day. We hope you enjoy today's podcast. Join us for the next special episode the Lord Buddha's day of victory over the Mara Shift. Thank you for your continued support. Subscribe, like and share to your friends and family. Until next time.